This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello, hello there, Chef Cutter Dobby, welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, May the 10th, in the year 1970, Bobby Orr was a hero, helping the Boston Bruins sweep the St. Louis Blues and give Boston a Stanley Cup. However, there's more to this. So let's go for context. We need some context. So the 1969-1970 season was big. We had one of the craziest f um, final days in history. As the Rangers and Habs were tied. All that. As the Habs, Habs and Rangers were both 38-22-16. and 16. Here's the funny thing. The next tiebreaker was not head-to-head. -head. It was by goals scored. Habs had a five-goal advantage. The Rangers did score nine goals, and the Habs only scored five. They only scored two, sorry. In fact, that was the last time... That was the only time between 1949 and 1994 the Habs missed the playoffs. It was 1970. But then they decided to change the second tiebreaker to head-to-head -head results. And goal differential was the third tiebreak. The 1970 playoffs was the only time that the two Canadian teams, Montreal well, and Toronto, failed to make the playoffs and all that. So every playoff from 1918 to 1969 had at least one of the two Canadian teams, Montreal and New York. It would not happen again until 2016 when Canada had seven teams, which was weird. So anyway, the playoff bracket was big. But the playoff bracket should have been one versus four, two versus three. But it those days, it was one versus three, two versus four. So the Rangers avoided the Blackhawks. However, they were they did they did hold Boston to sit a six-game series and all that. Rangers won both games three and four on home ice, but lost game six on... Their turf, and the Rangers won the series in I mean, the Bruins won the series in six. Meanwhile, the St. Louis Blues won the Western Division and all that. Minnesota took them hard. Just like the Rangers, Minnesota took, St. Louis, took two games at home, but then lost game six on home turf. So in the semifinals, or the, the semifinals, the Hawks were faced the Bruins. The Bruins were t in top. The Hawks were the best team in the East and it looked like Chicago was going to win it. Win it. But for some strange reason, the Blackhawks were crushed in four straight games by the Boston Bruins. And this was the season in which Tony Esposito put up 15 shutouts and won the Calder. St. Louis would face Pittsburgh to face the Bruins for the Stanley Cup. Pittsburgh won both games at Civic Arena to make it 2-2, but unfortunately the last game 6 to St. Louis. So St. Louis was undefeated on home ice, headed into the final against Boston. Fun fact, that was the last time Pittsburgh got to the Stanley Cup semifinals, till 1991. So yeah. So it was huge and all of that. For the 1969-70 season. So... Anyway, Boston went into St. Louis for games 1 and 2 and crushed them 6-1 and 6-2. Boston would score, Boston's six goals were scored by Busick, Busick, um, Johnny Busick put up a hat trick. The Chief, the legend, Johnny Busick. Wayne Carlton, Derek Sanderson, and Phil Esposito would score the other goals. St. Louis had Jimmy Roberts score. Not the NBC tennis guy, but some other guy. Garrett, Eric Cheever speech shot Plot in the net. Unfortunately, Plot was injured after a shot from Fred Stanfield deflected and struck Plot in the forehead of his face back, splitting the mask in half and injuring Plot. Plot couldn't play the rest of the series. He would have been killed if it wasn't for the mask of Shot Plot. Ernie Wakeley, Wakeley tried his best, but he failed. So they went back with Wakeley in game two against Cheevers. In game two, Boston won 6 2. Two goals by Ed Russell, two by Derek Sanderson, and goals by Fred Stanfield and Johnny Music. St. Louis had Terry Gray and Frank St. Marcial scoring. 
game three, so Glenn Hall coming to the net. Finally, St. Louis went with Glenn Hall, and he was the Cons winner in 1968. What the fuck happened? Anyway, St. Louis would score early in game three on a goal by Frank St. Marcile, and then Wayne Cashman Wayne Cashman put up two of the four goals for Boston with Johnny B. second John Pye McKenzie, the other one. And then came game four. Rick Smith scored at 528 to make it 1-0 Boston. Sec and then the second goal was scored by St. Louis, and it was Red Berenson, the legendary Red Berenson, making it 1-1 at 1917. In the second period, early on, Gary Saburn scored for St. Louis, make it 2-1. Then Esfilcito tallied for Boston to tie it at 2. In the third period, early, Larry Keenan put up a shot 19 seconds into the third period to make it 3-2. It looked like St. Louis was going to win and go to game five. Nope. Johnny the Chief Music did it with his 11th goal for playoff scoring at 13-28. Tied game at three. We go to overtime and early in overtime. It happened. Obviously, I'm not going to shoot uh, to the audio clip. I don't want to get in trouble. But anyway. Bobby Orr, behind the net, center to the door! Bobby Orr scores! And the Boston Bruins have won the Stanley Cup. Orr! Anyway, Dan Kelly called Orr Stanley Cup winning goal. The legendary Dan Kelly for CBS. And all that. Well, the most commonly seen video clip of Bobby Orr's goal was the American version on CBS called by Dan Kelly. And this is a rarity because they thought that kinescopes or videotapes would be broadcast from CBC's coverage. According to Dick Irvin Jr.'s book, Irvin was in the CBC booth with Danny Gallivan during the 1970 Stanley Cup Finals. And he was always curious why the CBC would use the CBS replay of the Bobby Orr goal with Danny Gallivan's commentary instead of Gallivan's goal <coughs> call. The explanation was that CBC's master tape of the game had to be thrown away in order to clear shelf space at the network. <clears throat> so, like, a lot of times master tapes would be uh, recorded over because of the high cost of videotape at the time. So, like, yeah, I thought, I thought Dan Kelly did the call for CBC. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, and I'm surprised CBS even did this game. Because Americans don't usually watch this stuff. So yeah, so the 1970 Boston Bruins <clears throat> were a great guy, were a great team and all that. So anyway, it was amazing. So at center, Boston at Phyllis Basile, Derek Sanderson, Fred Stanfield, Jim Lorenz, Kitchener, and also Ivan Boldriev, who was actually a spare and didn't play. Boldriev would be known for emigrating from Yugoslavia when he was two, and then playing a lot for the Blackhawks. <clears throat> wingers were the wingers were Ken Hodge Sr. Ken Hodge Jr. was a massive flop. Johnny Busick, Wayne Carlton. Wayne Cashman, Ace Bailey, not that Ace Bailey from Leafsland, but Garrett Garnet, Ace Bailey, who died in 9-11, Ed Westfall, John McKenzie, Johnny Marcotte, Dan Schock, Bill Lesick, and Ron Murphy. Defensemen were Bobby Orr, first, Ted Green, who was injured and didn't play because of that stick-swinging incident with Wayne Mackey during the preseason, Rick Smith, Dallas Smith, Bill Spear, Gary Doak, and Don Ari. And the goalies were Gary Cheevers, Ed Johnston, and third goalie, John Adams. Not that John Adams. So, anyway. Um. Yeah. All that. Yeah, John Adams and Baudry. I forgot their names and gave in the cup before their first NHL jump game and all that. Dan Schock was called out to play one playoff game from the minors, and he's in the cup. Ron Murphy had actually retired in March, but his name wasn't good. Boston didn't have an official captain for 1970. And in 1972, they didn't have an official captain either. Music, Esposito, and Westwell were alternates.
1970, the, the presentation, well, the original Stanley Cup Bowl was becoming too brittle, so they made a new presentation Stanley Cup in 1970, and the original Stanley Cup was put on permanent display at the Hockey Hall of Fame. <clears throat> it's amazing. I didn't even realize that, you know, all that. I had no clue that the Bobby Orr moment that was the CBS case, and CBC did, that was, Dan Kelly didn't call for CBC. I had no idea. I just learned something. So anyway, um, I'm going to a book for <clears throat> some contacts, too, which is unusual because usually I go online or through my own personal memories. Years ago, I bought, oh, no, years ago, I got a book called What's the Score, a book by Liam McGuire, who is one of the legendary sports historian, hockey historians of all time. And I got it on my 31st birthday. That was 2016? Yeah, 2016. So I've had this book for six years. And basically, um, Liam does something near the back about the Bobby Orr stuff and all the number fours and all that. There were 70 correlations to the number four. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm not going to read you all 70 because that would be just stupid. I'm going to read to you some of the most poignant ones. M. So Bobby Orr wore number four for Boston. Noel Picard, the guy who tripped Bobby Orr in that famous picture, wore number four for the Blues. Um, it was the fourth game of the series, the fourth period of the fourth game, and the goal scored at the 42nd mark of overtime. And Sanderson's assist on Orr's goal was his fourth assist of the playoffs. Um, Sanderson was one of four Bruins to be born in June. Alongside Greg Smith, Ken Hodge, Wade Cashman. Um, let's see. It was Boston's fourth goal of the cup winning game. Gave Boston its fourth Stanley Cup title. Previously, they won in 29, 39, and 41. Noel Schmidt was the fourth GM in Bruins history. It was Art Ross, Lynn Patrick, and Hap Elms before him. Boston beat their fourth different opponent in the Stanley Cup Finals. The Rangers in 1929, their Leafs in 39, the Wings in 41, and the Blues in 70. The Rangers would fall to them in 72. Um, the 1970 season was Harry Singer's fourth as coach of the Bruins. It was the fourth series in the 1970 playoffs that ended in a four-game sweep. This was the end of Orr's fourth season in the NHL. Bobby Orr winning the Consumer Trophy won four trophies in the season, alongside the Art Ross for scoring leader, Hart for MVP, and Norris for defenseman. Um, Orr was the fourth defenseman to score a cup winning goal at the time. Babe Pratt, Bill Barilico, and J.C. Trombley were the others. Um, Orr established or tied four Stanley Cup records in the 1970 season. Most points by defenseman, 20. Most goals, 9. Most consecutive games with at least a point, 14. And the record he tied was shorthand goes on period 1. Um, Orr was one of four Bruins to score a goal in the Stanley Cup designing game. Rick Smith, Phil Esposito, and Johnny Bisek were the other ones. Well, in the 1970 playoffs. Um, Orr was fourth in playoff assists with 11. Orr had four assists in the Stanley Cup finals that year. Um, or surpassed the defenseman record of four goals in a playoff year, Earl Seabird in 1938. Um, let see. Yeah, four different Bruins scored game winning goals in the finals. Johnny Buzik, Ed Westball, Pine McKenzie, and then Bob Bruins scored goals in all four periods of that cup design game, game four. Um, Boston outshot St. Louis in all four games. Uh, it was the fourth game played in May of 1970. It was the fourth time in series featured two American teams that one of the teams swept. And the Bruins were involved in all of those sweeps. Boston swept the Rangers in the 29 finals. Boston prevailed over Detroit in 1941 in the final. And the Red Wings eliminated Boston in four games in the semifinals. I remember, excuse me, right? Or the finals, I don't remember. Um, um, but... Liam says there were many players who finished their playoffs with exactly four penalty minutes and four assists and four goals and all that and four losses. So basically, that's just what oh, I've got. 
So, man, the guy with the number four and all that, that's amazing. What Liam McGuire did about Bobby Orr. And Bobby Orr's goal is still legendary, the flying goal. The one that people will never duplicate or replicate, whatever you want to call it. And gave Boston the Stanley Cup. For St. Louis, this was bad because this was the third time they made the final and had lost 12 straight. They were swept all three times, 15, 69 by the Habs and 70 by the Bruins. But it came with a good thing as the NHL decided to change things up before the 70-71 season, moving Chicago to the West Division. Well, mostly because Buffalo and Vancouver were coming into the league. But they moved Chicago to the West, meaning that there would be an ex a better... A better sense of the Western Division playoffs. However, it came at a price too, as they decided that after the East and West play their semifinals, they would cross over. So there was a good chance that the East would have two teams play against each other. You know, the East were the original six teams, and the West were the were the expansion teams of so '68. So that kind of was a little controversial and all that, because no Western. Well, Chicago did win as the Western Division guys in 71 and 73, but anyway, Vegas like fought in the final. And of course, that 71 season was pathetic because they put Vancouver in the East instead of the West. But that's another story for another time. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.